but I'm going to get you another one. I'll be in Kapa'a next Saturday oh, for yeah? first Saturday. You guys should come down. Oh yeah. Uh, that's when is that next Saturday? Okay. We're yeah, next Saturday. So come, come down and please pick out another shirt. Okay. I'll come down. What time does that start? Well, I'm there at nine in the morning. The All whole right. party in the street thing happens at like five o'clock. Okay. That's when it's fun to come. Come in the evening. It's a lot more fun. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see here. Let me go into, uh, hang on. We're live, by the way. Let's see. Oh. All right. But I don't know who's here. Hang on. Okay. Let's see if I can share it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's on my page. So. Yeah. Let me see. I'll be in Kapa'a. Ooh, Ooh, I can hear myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. 17 people in the house. Uh, let's see what we got. 18. Laws Mitchell, Paul Castaneda, uh, Mary Lou, Andrew Rawlings, Nora Bouvier, who we had a great show with yesterday, Rachel Scott, Raquel Toombs, my dear friend from Canada. All right, let me uh, share it into the... Uh, group all right let's see one two three so that's next saturday yes i'm gonna have to make a note of that well i don't do anything in the evenings anyway on on, on air okay 11. 31 people in the house tamara jean diane mclaughlin quite a few other people Somebody's putting frowns up. <laughs> okay. Love it. Chris Hebling, Switzerland. Maria Iverson from Sweden. She's been coming in. Hi, Maria. If these shows resonate with you, please share. We would appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for your continued love, support, and contributions. It allows us to keep doing what we're doing as we move closer to our own stream and website that's coming soon I'm, I, it looks like it'll be in may uh so we're kind of excited about that and when we do it we're going to be uh streaming uh from our website with zoom and broadcast software as well as youtube and facebook at the same time hello anna thomas big hugs and kisses to you and the kids julie rowe kelly bird 43 people in the house dale lawrence Sridhar Haldankar from Mumbai City, India. Nalini Desara, she's going to be on uh, very soon. We had to reschedule. Uh, Morgan came back early. Thank, thank the goddess. Thank the god and goddess. <laughs> I know. How exciting. I know. Linda Keshbion, Keshbun. And Gail Christopher from North Dakota and Rose Love from Cape Cod. We've got people from all over. Okay, so let's uh, formally roll the show out. We're, uh, <laughs> this is a Soldier One Network. This is our primary show called Soul Speaks 5D. We're getting together with our beloved sister, Amira, who's right here on the island in Kauai, just uh, 10 miles away, maybe, something like that, 15. And, and it's uh, Aloha Friday. <laughs> Aloha Friday. All right. So uh, welcome back. Thank you for sharing space with us and honor us with your presence and for wearing that shirt today. The one that I don't <laughs> have. <anymore. laughs> yeah, uh, we have a we have a good quote here. Let me just say from our friend Sridhar from India, our mind ultimately is our greatest asset. We have to be careful of what advice we put in it and who gives it to us. Thoughts have energy. We have to make sure they are positive and powerful. Hello, Joan Kirkendall and Michelle Smith. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Amira is going to shed some light on the 13th. Gateway. 13th Gateway. And yes. uh, for those of you who didn't catch the earlier show she was with us, uh, you can catch those on uh, in the archives on Facebook under photos, albums, and videos. They're in chronological order. Or you can catch them on YouTube and just, and just query her name. Uh, or you can just go to the uh, Soul Speaks 5D playlist at Soldier One Studios on YouTube. So what is the 13th Gateway? Well, 
I'm going to kind of lead up to that and um, just kind of open up this conversation um, by letting everybody know I'm going to talk about a, a lot of things today. Um, for those of you who know me, sacred geometry is kind of my thing. Um, sacred geometry and the great kingdom of Atlantis and how geometry and, Atlant and Atlantis come together and work together as we rewrite the spiral of time happening now, birthing into 5D. So um, we've talked about, the last time I was on, we talked about the number 13. Do you remember that at all? Yep. We talked about, yes. Yeah, it was the second so, time you were on. That was uh, Morgan had gotten the same intel you'd gotten. And when she got up the next morning, you were writing about it. I remember. Right. That. So we connected it all back to sacred geometry and Metatron's cube, I think. And if we didn't do that, I'm going to do that today because Metatron's cube really is a metaphor for the human evolution. Uh, it really is the template for our ascension, for evolution, and for everything that's happening in our energy field. And on the date of... <laughs> So, okay, I'm going to back up a little bit and I, I brought you some visuals. So for anybody who's not familiar, this is what Metatron's cube looks like. And Metatron's cube holds every platonic solid plus a bunch of other stuff. And the platonic solids are the building blocks of our physical reality. So sacred ge geometry literally aligns us with the blueprint of creation because this is creation. Our physical reality is comprised of platonic solids and sacred geometry. And this is what Archangel Metatron puts around everything he creates for God. Okay, so for those of you who, who may not be familiar with sacred geometry, I just want to talk this a little bit. You don't need to know a lot to have a basic working knowledge and understanding of how sacred geometry is everything and how it helps us. So one of the things you might know or notice about this configuration is that there are 13 spheres. And the number 13 is, is a very significant number to us at this time because it represents the number of mastery. So why does it represent the number of mastery? Because 12 is completion. We have 12 months in a year. We have two sets of 12 on a clock. Um, we have the 12 tribes of Israel. We have the 12 zodiac signs. That's a completion number. What happens? We, we, have, we have the 12 disciples and we have the 12 um, knights of uh, King Arthur, right? Simple. What happens when we add the 13th? Jesus, King Arthur. What happens is we bring in the master. And the cycle starts over at the mastery level. So all these stories that we hear, all this mythology is, is all about, it, it, it's, it's all a metaphor for what happens through Metatron's cube and what's happening through us. We actually have 13 chakras in our body. We don't have seven energy centers. We have 13. And all 13 of those energy centers are coming online the 13th gateway is coming online within us, okay, and fully activated, allowing us to step into our personal mastery. So what does that mean to step into our personal mastery? Does that mean we all become like enlightened all at once and we know everything and life is easy? No. Okay, we can go now. <laughs> we can go to the yeah. beach. It, it doesn't mean that, mean that at all. So mastery is a development, just like the development that it took us to get to where we are now. Mm -hmm. Human evolution, the human consciousness, we, we have gotten to a point where we are ready for more. For a long time, it was just the seven chakras. You know, that's what humans needed to learn through and learn about in order to kick off this whole ascension deal. And we did this for thousands of years. We have way surpassed that in the amount of people in the collective consciousness who, who are evolving. And we are ready to really understand our full 13 chakra Atlantean template from the earth star beneath the feet and the stellar gateway above the head. And if anybody is curious about knowing more about this, I'm just going to kind of touch on it today. 
on my website, I have teachings. I have courses. You can pick up on it. On my YouTube channel, I talk very much about it. So this is just going to give you like a basic run through of the number 13 and the 13th chakra, the master chakra that is opening up within us and this gateway that happened on the, um, the 13th of April, mm. which opened us up to embodying or bringing that expansiveness through the sacred soul chakra, which happens to be located right between your heart and your solar plexus. It's right in the center of your body. Right. So between the heart and your solar plexus, you have an energy center called the sacred soul. And when Metatron began talking to me about this energy center years ago, there was basically nobody talking about it. There was nobody writing about it. I couldn't find, I found very little information anywhere. So I started teaching small groups. And I've continued to teach groups of people that getting as many people as I can ready kind of for this moment, kind of for this point in time where there's an activation point. So what you are going to be learning today, your, whether you're aware you have a 13th chakra or not, it doesn't matter. You do. <laughs> and it's activating. But when we have a left brain working knowledge of what it is and what's going on in our body, we can really expand our efforts. Like all of a sudden the right brain that is creative and intuits, you know, and is in this wonderful metaphysical world, the left brain goes, okay, now I can make sense of what my right brain is trying to tell me. Hmm. We need information humans do. We need tangible experiential stuff. We kind of need proof or evidence. Right. So this information is going to allow what your right brain does naturally. It's going to allow your left brain to go, okay, I get this. Now I know how I can work with this. Now I know what's happening within me. Okay. Which is very, very exciting. That's how I need to learn anyway. So even as you get this information, if you're hearing it for the first time, know that you're already covered. Everybody plays, everybody wins. It's just a matter of now integrating the information as truth. If this feels true to you, if it doesn't feel true to you, that's okay. Don't, don't integrate it in as your truth. Just kind of follow it away and think, okay, that, that thing Amira said, I'm not really sure how I feel about that, but thank, thanks for sharing, Amira. And then maybe somewhere down the line, you know, you, um, something happens, something triggers you, and, and you might go back and remember this video. And you might go, okay, I get it now. Now I understand what was being explained. Now I'm, I can process this as part of my truth and, and allow it to help me. So just take it for what it is today. Because that for some people, this might be, might be something like you've never heard of before. It's all good. Anyway, so back to Metatron's Cube. Metatron's Cube, because it has 13 spheres, it is literally the, a working model of our 13 energy centers and our energy centers actually are not linear. We work with them linear because that's easy for us and that's what they're taught, but they are three dimensionally around us. Mm -hmm. The access point, the center point is the sacred soul chakra, which is the 13th chakra that's in between the heart and the solar plexus. And Todd, you can let me know if you feel like I should talk more just about that concept, I will. Um, if no, you feel, you know, no, good. What, tell what, me how you what, feel. Well, what you're saying is, is that, that that is available to us now. Yes. Yeah. And, okay. And and this is your working model of the human energy system. Okay. So I want you to envision that your energy centers are actually around you, 360 degrees, not just linear, because mm -hmm. we're multidimensional beings. We're not linear beings. So why would our energy centers be linear? You can continue to work with them in a linear fashion. That's just fine. But open yourself up to the idea that if we are truly multidimensional beings existing in many realms and realities simultaneously, why would our energy centers be limited to something linear? And again, I have courses and videos talking about all this if you want to go deeper. So something really exciting happened on 4-13-3, April 13th, 2019, which is okay. a three. Okay. Okay. And, and, and the reason I like to show it like this is, again, if when you see it, it's different than just hearing it. Okay. So I, I, like, I like to talk and explain things in archetypes. 
because I because I think we can all kind of relate to again that idea of an arch uh, numbers are associated with archetypal energies. This was the date the thirteenth gateway opened up for us. Okay, so why this date? Well, obviously there's a thirteen in the middle. Uh, the other thing that we are doing at this point in our evolution is what balancing our masculine and feminine, right? Yeah. Like we're coming into our mastery through the balancing and integration of our masculine and feminine. So most, most of the people watching are probably familiar with tarot cards. So on one side, we've got the four in tarot, which is the emperor. On the other side, we've got the three in tarot, which is the empress. Mm. Okay, so we've got the masculine and feminine on either sides of these, these 13s, which is the number of mastery. In Tarot, the number 13 is associated with death, which is actually transformation and rebirth. Wow. So I have listened to other people on your show talk about how it feels like over the first three, four months of this year, that death. we've all <laughs> died many, many deaths. <laughs> Deaths of identity, deaths of ego, deaths of expectations of things we thought were going to happen. We are, our, our ego has kind of been pummeled <laughs> yeah. into, into this point to where we have been asked to become so fully present and conscious and in trust and faith without expectations. Okay. And that's mastery. Mastery is not becoming this like enlightened magnificent being this Christed and and taking off out of the planet it's learning how to be so divinely eloquently beautifully human and in trust and alignment with our connection to god that every moment i have i've had to practice practice waking up and saying okay what wonderful thing could happen today exactly. today is a brand new day i have no idea what to expect because things that I thought were going to happen did not. Um, for me, I, I went through it, what, what many, of, many of you did is, is my whole identity basically shattered. Um, I spent about five, six weeks in a hole. <laughs> was, this, was this in like uh, March, February, March? Well, I'll tell you, it started, it actually started on February 15th at 3.33 in the morning. Mm. And I had a Kundalini awakening which at, in that moment was wonderful, but the fallout from that was not fun. Yeah. And it took about five or six weeks for me to come to the other side of, of like a really severe depression that I hid very well <laughs> um, for me to connect it back to that was the catalyst for the day. But I think what happened to me, whether you had a Kundalini activation or not, we all went through this portal of time for a couple of months where we didn't know who we were or what we were supposed to be doing on this planet. I know I did really, really severely. Um, waking up every day and thinking, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. <laughs> I don't even yeah. feel like me anymore. Okay, yeah, can I you kind of a lot, that? I, you know, I didn't have that happen, um, but I know a lot of people that did. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people talked about it. Yeah. So on the 13th, of April was the opening of this gateway. And it was kind of the end to that specific cycle. It was the transformation and the rebirth and, and the, the, the deeper integration of the masculine and feminine energies. And that portal took us into the, the full moon, yeah. which was on about the 18th. Those were really significant days. Okay, so that gateway is still open. Those were just the most potent days. And so I, I like to share this information because it, it's nice to make sense to what actually went down. Yeah. Yeah. And why we felt the way we did. And what's going to go down. <laughs> we don't know. See, that's the thing. Don't we don't know because in this moment, it feels like everything is still ending. Yeah. And the new beginning hasn't quite come in. And I think that's a 2020 thing. 2020. The, the year, year 2020. 2020. Yeah. That, that's what I believe. I don't know if I can believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> In this moment, that's my truth. When uh, we get to 2020, 
we'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah. And I'm not discounting that. I've heard people talk about 2020, 2024, 2028, 2029. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how you can put anything on a linear scale like that. You, you know, and we really can't. And really, all again, all we can do is wake up and just ask God, how can I serve today? True. What, what, true. what miracle? What's here waiting to support me through my day? Show me, clear the path. Show me the way. Yeah. Now, 2020, though, <clears throat> definitely has some, there's some power behind that number. And it's been yes. mentioned. I don't think it's just people, you know. I, th I think it's they're getting it you know that's that's an intel coming in that's you know a lot of people are picking up on yeah for sure i don't know what it's going to look like i really don't so you, you know excited it, <laughs> exactly and you know um the other thing is that uh on the previous show with david he was talking about metatron mm -hmm. I've, I've never had and i tell people this all the time i've never had connection not not disconnection but i've never had you know like a encounter a communion a communion with metatron that i can think of would you um, like to yeah i'd love to he you know uh, at the end of the broadcast if you want to let's do a metatron's cube activation yeah at the end we'll do one I, cool. I need like five minutes i'm familiar with the 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 symbol the sacred mm -hmm. geometric symbol of course and um but david was talking about um, I don't even know how he got into it, but he was talking about Orion's belt and yeah. he was talk talking about the three stars of the belt and how those represent zero point. Yeah. Uh, and Mintaka is where I'm from, which is in that belt. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, and he was talking about how it kept jumping out. And now I remember, cause the same thing happened to me, uh, when we got to the Island and, uh, but anyway, he was saying that Metatron was the overseer of that. He mentioned that, that feels so, right. Yeah. Kind of like the gatekeeper. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, with this 13th shock 13th gateway, I mean, what is, what does that mean to us? I and mean, it's available to us. Mm -hmm. Does it have any specific, it's a soul chakra. Does it have any specific attributes or anything like that? Uh, I guess if you want to, I, you know, when I experience it, I experienced it as white light. Mm -hmm all of our energy centers are changing they're becoming more kaleidoscope so as you or anybody else goes into yours you need to tune into what your specific colors or frequency or sizes or shapes are for you for what is uniquely you mm -hmm. i experience it as white light mm -hmm. and it is our connection to that mastery idea of christ consciousness of yeah. purpose it's actually merging the heart and the solar plexus together to create one triad of energy within us, like the Vesica Pisces. Mm. So imagine the sacred soul and the heart coming together to form a triad of energy in the center or the, the solar plexus and the heart to find, form a triad of energy and the sacred soul being in the middle. That, and that, that, that womb of light, you know, that yoni of the universe center point is the Trinity. It's the yeah. Holy Grail. That's, and that would be, that would be in the space of the Vesica Pisces. If yes. You okay. Yeah. Very cool. So that's powerful. That's creation. Right? Yeah. Creation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And how does Atlantis fit into the 13th gateway? So the, the Atlantean chakra system in Atlantis, we taught the 13 chakras. That's that that was the template. There was not not this seven. Um, we are rewriting the spiral of time for Atlantis. Meaning that when the, the final fall happened 13,000 years ago, when the experiment was complete, and and the experiment was could five fifth dimensional beings come into a third dimensional body and remember their divine connection to source. And so like every experiment, a variable had to be inserted, which is what we call the darkness. Hmm. The dark element was allowed in, that was always the plan hmm. because it was an experiment. And the beings who came to Atlantis knew they were eternal. They knew they were eternal. In their humanness at the end of the fall, 
because the consciousness had dropped so much, they forgot that fact that they were eternal beings and they fought and clung and hung on and warned Atlantis as, as it came down. And so that's why the idea of it being a failure mm -hmm. is so prevalent in, in, our, in our memories, which it was not a failure. It was simply an experiment that resulted in one way. Yeah. The new experiment is how do third dimensional beings with third dimensional conscious consciousness rise up to fifth? I see. We're doing the reverse. We're rewriting. I see. That's We're still just in an experiment. <laughs> right? It doesn't feel like one. <laughs> no, you know, it's the it's worst experiment ever. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, um, I saw I saw something a couple of days ago, too. And they were talking about um, how this whole thing obviously was an experiment. But they were yes. breaking it down more into the physical, what I would call the physical, which mm -hmm. included, which included several ET races and and the yes. uh, the uh, tool retooling or whatever the uh, uh, modifying of the DNA of the human. Yeah, the human well, it's a very human. serious experiment yeah. because what happened in Atlantis actually rewrote the DNA and the templates for all those races. It changed them. It, it changed, changed their it changed our future selves. Did it change those that retooled our DNA or just the human species? I I think it changed everybody because one that's, thing ripple effects to everything. Yeah, that's what I think too. That's why that's why I think that what we're doing here is a universal correction. Like yes. We're, even though we feel like we're the smallest kid on the block, we're really not. We're actually well, exactly. And I call an experiment because it's never been done before. <laughs> But I do believe there is a divine plan. I do believe the divine is in everything. And this tapestry we are weaving together through the Akashic records, this tapestry there, it, every, every thought, every action, every soul, all of it is a part of that divine plan. And of course, I do believe that it will be successful. Absolutely. Well, and what we are attempting to do. I mean, how can purity not be? You know, like you said, it was an experiment. There was never any, you know, there was never any, uh, it's just a matter of how it all unfolds. Uh, Cause it's all, you know, it's all going to go back to what it was or however you want to put it. Yeah. You know, or into an expanded version. That's the way I see it. What right. We're doing, what we're doing is, is expanding the universe. You know? Yes. This, this is a big, big mission though. This one, maybe the biggest ever. It, yeah. It, like what we're doing in our, our teeny tiny blue planet is literally ripple affecting out and affecting, yeah. I, I believe it's affecting every planet, yeah. universe, timeline, all of it. So it, it is it is very important and very That's special awesome. to be here at this time to take part in it. Did you, I'm just curious, when you were going through this five or six weeks and you, and you mentioned uh, uh, some things that popped up and everything, did you have, were you having a strong communion? Were you having strong connections? Uh, while this was happening, or were you kind of in a very human mode? Uh, I was in a very human mode. Um, I was in a very depressed mode yeah. as I felt like the collapsing of, um, you know, just the disintegration of an old identity as I embodied more of my higher self, who is, who is Yemaya, um, who is the African ocean god of the seven seas, the goddess of the seven seas. Wow. She, she is my oversoul. And, you know, whenever something, before something can come in, something has to exit. It's energy out before energy in. And, you know, we humans are very attached to our identities and to our yeah. egos. Yeah. And when those have to collapse, so something new can come forward, that, that can feel like a death. Like it can feel really, really awful. And I mourn the loss of my former self. Um, I wiped my template in my body of all my former lovers, all my former partners, all of that was wiped clean. Wow. And did you have a moment when you knew you were out of it, out of the funk? Uh, I did. I, I think I woke up April 1st. I want to say it was April 1st. And all of a sudden I woke up and I was like, oh, I'm better. It's over. Mm. Wait, is it really over? Because I, I kind of came in waves. For a couple of weeks, I would be really not doing well. And then I would snap out of it for a couple of days and think, okay, it's passed. And then I would just be like, dunked right back and in, back into the thick of it. 
Um, but since about April 1st, everything seemed to shift. All right. That's, that's what I felt like. Yeah, there was four now. <laughs> that's how, that's every month's been though. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, this, this month is feels good though. I like this month. Uh, Claire Bourne. It, you know, says, it's a re, kind of a reboot month. Yeah. It's kind it of a so. reboot month. It, it, like what you said was, you know, you're saying goodbye to these things you thought you were, and it's kind of like, then what am I? And then that's, yes. being introduced, that's being introduced. Uh, Claire Bourne says, please read this. It says, Metatron gave me something I called the blessing symbol 30 years ago. Before I ever heard the name Metatron, my guide, quote unquote, my guide, I always called him. Years later, I found Metatron's cube and went uh, happiness, smiley face. Oh, went, oh, went, oh. Uh, she says, yeah, uh, this symbol has helped me with a great fear of going out there, quote unquote, going out there too sensitive to vibes as I draw it around me like a bubble. And I say, as above, so below, bless this space within, without, through the one. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. So when she says blessing symbol, I wonder if she's talking about Metatron's cube itself or something else. Mm, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I found Metatron's cube and went, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, yeah. and that's, and I do Metatron's cube activations for people for that purpose, for just what Claire said. And so if you like at the end, um, I can bring in, um, bring in the geometry around anybody who, who was open to receive it. And, and it is a blessing. Yeah. I said, let's do it. Yeah. We, we've got time yeah. though. We've got 20 minutes. Awesome. Yeah. So, so uh, now, so how are you feeling today? We got the 13th. Yeah, uh, you uh, know, this month I have felt uh, 90% like back on top of my game as far as like how I, how I feel energetically, my moods, my excitement towards life. I still wake up and really don't know what I'm supposed to be doing in life. <laughs> you don't. Sure you do. I know your, I know your story. Yeah, sure you do. You ended up here, but the only thing I can't figure out is how you ended up in Lemuria when you're from Atlantis. Uh, because I act as a bridge hmm. between Atlantis and Lemuria. I am Atlantean. I'm an Atlantean Mervian, and I act as kind of an, an ambassador. This is where I was sent to Lemuria. Um, wow. You know, Kauai is, as you know, a spectacular, amazing. Mm -hmm place and i i spent a lot of time on this land rewriting the spiral of atlantis and what does that mean rewriting the spiral of atlantis like rewriting the timeline like yes the timeline? reversing we're, 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 we are we are attempting to reverse out to rewrite okay and so through through me through my steps on this land and especially when we go to Mah you know i go to mahalo when i go to that labyrinth where we all went together that is a very important and potent place for me to kind of like plant seeds with my feet that used to be fins <laughs> that used to be fins yes yeah, I, I, I saw a picture uh somebody i think it was my friends that came to visit me here but they they took a picture you know that where the labyrinth is and then we walked you know and there was mm -hmm. a really cool cove uh mm -hmm. yeah and i saw some people camping out there that'd be a cool yeah. place to camp that's a yeah, powerful sure. place. The whole island's powerful. Yeah. So that, so this is good news. I mean, there's been, and you know, the other thing is you mentioned depression and, and there's been people talking about that and, you know, not to mince words, people talking about suicide, people yeah. talking, wanting to leave the planet. I had a good friend of mine uh, sent me a note uh, two, three days ago and she said she was in dimension and uh, our dream state and that all these people were talking about uh, suicide. The, the, and that's how I felt, Todd. I, I went through weeks where I didn't want to stay here anymore. Wow. It, it was, it was, uh, you know, and I really, it really helped me to understand, potentially understand people who live with chronic depression every day and they don't know why. And they have this dark cloud because I went through weeks of that. Yeah. How'd you deal with that? Um, I, Uh -oh. Temporary. No, it's all. Let's get the energy back up. My 911 people. You know, I have my people that I call and my healers that I talk to when I can't, I can't help myself. And I, I just had to believe and trust that 
it was going to pass and it did. There was a there was a lot of talk of that too. I noticed I noticed that people were talking about how and I don't know. Well, you know what I do, how on kind of a um, present uh, scale, that that had been something that we do, right, that we reach out to, yeah. to our brothers and sisters, and how that wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And how that basically, well, kind of like, you know, we're, we got to row our own boat basically. And, uh, that, that, and I, don't, I mean this energetically, not, not in any other way. I just like the energy's there and this is what are more natural for us not to, you know, and kind of like you know, the difference between, uh, not the difference, but on one end you got codependency and on one, on one end you got the co-creation, which right. you're when, what you're explaining about the 13th chakra, that seems to be being in the, the, being in the middle of the, the Vesica Pisces between the heart and the, uh, that seems uh, like that is the creation seed to me, like you were talking yes. about the triad. Yeah. Yes. Zero point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I wonder what uh, I wonder what the deal is with Orion's belt, because uh, when I got here, I started noticing it like I've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. And I noticed serious. Yeah, it's very prominent time. here. Huh? It's very yeah. prominent here. Orion's it, belt. It's yeah, it's really like it kept standing out. Like, and, and on one side you got uh, Sirius, and on the other side, mm -hmm. it goes from Orion's belt, and then part of Orion's belt, which is the Taurus constellation. Yeah, the Eye of Taurus is Albert Albedaron, which in some of the research I did, casts an eye or keeps an eye on Pleiades. Yeah, then so part of, of why part of why Orion's belt is so important is because Mentaka is the water planet. And I believe water is from outer space. Water came from outer space. And I believe at least some of the water, if not all, came from the blue planet and the mer beings came with it. And the blue, the blue planets, what? The What's water the planet. It's the water yeah. planet or the blue. star system. Mintaka is, it is, is oh, it's called the blue planet. Mintaka, okay. yes. And when water came to earth and when earth was when Earth was, when Earth became, water was sent from outer space and the myrrh came with it. So the myrrh have always been on Earth. We have always been. I didn't know there was a blue planet. Yeah. But I, but I have heard in over, and for several years, like my own transmissions and then other people uh, talk about the people of the deep blue. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I wonder... There must be some kind of association there because I've known people that that in dream state and meditation, they go into the into the deep blue and they actually go through like caves and stuff. And then they end up in uh, what sounds like uh, another planet, basically. Yeah. With, with mer with mer people. Yeah. Right. So Can we talk a little bit about wisdom where? Absolutely. Well, we need to. Yeah. Show us your shirt. <laughs> Uh, okay, so many of you out there know, and some don't know, that it's sacred geometry and, and bringing forward sacred geometry and the esoteric knowledge and wisdom of sacred geometry is, is part of my mission here as given by Archangel Metatron. And most people are familiar with at least the term sacred geometry and maybe the flower of life. Which is, which is what I'm wearing today and which, what's behind me and maybe Metatron's cube in the Vesic Pisces. So sacred geometry has become so important to the evolution of humanity that um, Metatron told me it was to be taken out of eso esoteric concept. You know, we're only Freemasons or ancient civilizations or people who privy, privy to that information could utilize it. And it needed to be returned to the people and it needed to be returned now mm. because sacred geometry is the alignment to the blueprint of creation it is the gateway out of the matrix so um i have a clothing company and i have a sacred geometry clothing company that has crystals infused into the ink so there's micronized crystal dust in the ink of my clothes so you not only get the sacred geometry, and I use organic bamboo fabrics, but you also get crystals. And the crystals I used are, are the Andaras. I you, micronize Andaras into dust. What? Oh, so you crumble them? You, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, they come mostly broken down for me. Mm -hmm. And then I just take them the rest of the way and I infuse the ink. The crystals are in the ink on the front and the back. And my, my goal is to dress 144,000 people because, you know, that's, that's the creation, the ascension number in my crystal infused sacred geometry clothing to create a vibrational tipping point for all of us. So it's like harnessing the, the energy of that number to create a grid through a human grid through all of us. So that everybody plays, everybody wins, and we can open those gateways, you know, those final gateways. And I think there's 144,000 gateways for everybody. Um, you know, and I really appreciate you allowing me to talk about my clothing company, about Wisdom Wear. It's wisdomwear.org on, on your show. And I dropped a cue card. Hang on. There you go. And I actually right. wanted to um, give a special offer to, to your viewers. Absolutely. So I, I created a discount code oh, yeah? on my website, and I am Soul Fifteen. <laughs> there That's you go. it. I am Soul Fifteen. That's the discount code. That's the website wisdomware.org. And if you go and if you see, so I, I have T-shirts, tank, long and short sleeve, men's and women, women's stuff, and then I also sell the Andaras. Um, if you love Andaras, or if you've never had an Andara, they they work directly on your heart and DNA. They're they're really amazing monatomic glass energy okay they're not a crystal they're, it's an andara it's really important to know the difference what, what is what does that mean what's the difference between them so what is it? It, it, it's a form of volcanic glass okay so it's not technically a crystal we call kind of call everything a crystal mm -hmm. whether it's a mineral whether it's whatever it is um but monatomic energy means there's there's one element in them and they are found on a land that contains ethereum powder. And ethereum powder was ingested by the Lemurians and by many ancient civilizations. Um, Tejote, <laughs> Jennifer Dragonglass, she saw that, she saw that yellow one. Um, Tejote Poth writes about ethereum powder in the Emerald Tablets. So it's can, a, you, a very, can, you, can you repeat that? He writes about what? About Ethereum powder. Oh, Ethereum. The Emerald ta tablets. Sometimes it's also called Ormus. Some people take Ormus. Oh, Ormus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that that that's another name for it. So it's so, found. It's found where Ormus is. It's right? found where Ethereum powder is, and that okay. they come from uh, uh, from a place in the Sierra Nevadas um, in February of 1967. Mm -hmm. The first Andara was found on a Choctaw medicine woman's property named Lady Nellie. February 1967 also happens to be the year and month of my birth. Mm. So the Andaras and I are very, very connected. Mm. Um, and so I steward these out, adopt them out for, for the man, my friend, Mickey Magic, who, who pulls them off her land. Lady Nellie, before she died, gave him access and permission to steward all the the andaras out for for the world and so i i wholesale for him and then use these crystals to put into my clothes so they they literally are medicinal clothing and my goal really is to create a medicinal clothing line that will help people with whatever you've got going on but when you wear sacred geometry sacred geometry is projective there's only three things in the world that are projective a light bulb a rude raksha seed, which are the Hindu mala beads, which we have also on Kauai, and sacred geometry, which means when you wear it, not only does it help your energy field, mm. but you actually ripple effect everybody who comes into your sphere or everybody who sees it, whether they know what they're looking at or not, you affect them. Okay, so these shirts are medicinal and healing for the wearer, and they are healing for actually for the world. Wow. for the planet and so you've got shirts you've got long sleeve short sleeve you've yeah got the, the long and short sleeve like this would be an example right here and this is organic bamboo i use all organic fabrics of metatron's cube and then i put a big ohm colorful ohm on the back of that mm. so i've got long and short sleeve and i've got some tank tops and i'm gonna i mean there'll be a whole whole other line of clothing coming um and if anybody is out there in the world 
who um, wants a really good investment slash partnership energy uh, uh, opportunity and wants to help me elevate wisdom work because I really do want it to be a worldwide thing. <laughs> uh, you're welcome to hit me up and we can talk about that. Um, but in the meantime, it's teaching as many people as I can about sacred geometry, about what it is and how it helps us and putting people in a really nice fabric that helps you energetically and, and ultimately helps the planet. How did you get the idea to pulverize the Andaras? Was that from a You know, I actually bought it from a guy who was on the island when I first moved here. Um, so I have Metatron's cube completely. My whole back is tattooed Metatron's cube because he told me several years ago, he's like, I want you to tattoo my, my, my cube on your back. I'm like the whole, my whole back. He's like, yes, you'll understand later. So I did this beautiful artwork piece with, um, it's got all the elements in it and some other things on my back. And I'm a couple of years later, I moved to Kauai and, and I met a guy who had Metatron's cube tattooed on his arm. And he had this clothing company that I just thought was brilliant. And I started selling clothes for him and I was teaching classes on sacred geometry and he wasn't really doing anything with the company. So one day he just looked at me and he said, you're way better at this than me. You're obviously into it by my company. Go, go bring sacred geometry out to the collective. Was he already and, putting the uh, Andara? Yeah, uh, he, was, he, was using, he was using a five quartz crystal mix. Mm -hmm. And then at, shortly after I bought the company, um, the Andaras came to me and, and they said, you know, no, we, we, we want to represent, we want to go be the representation um, in the clothing. So mm -hmm. not everybody has an Andara, has access to Andara and knows what it is. But if you get a shirt, you know, if you if you have a shirt, somebody somebody's shirt, it makes the Andaras more. Like that micronized dust, you don't even have to have an actual crystal. If you've got them in your clothing, your heart and your DNA is being affected and healed by them. And then that that is allowing the Andaras to reproduce, I guess, and go out more on a bigger scale. That's that's amazing. I wonder yeah, what happened. Is, I would wonder what happened if you wore them as underwear. <laughs> I made underwear. I've made power panties <laughs> with the flower of life on them. They're activated underwear. Oh my God. That's I, funny. I have done that. That's funny. So this so is the one that I work with. This is an elder Andara right here. Hmm. So there's a couple different families of Andaras. The elders are the wise ones. And if you see it, it looks just like a heart. They are like the wise grandparents. They're not as pretty and shiny as you know some of the colored ones and people like are really drawn to the colored ones but the elders there's the green elders and the shaman brown elders that are really connected to earth earth mm -hmm. energies these are like these are the ones that will ground you if you need grounding these are the ones that will um, teach you that you that you want to sleep with some of the um, colored ones are really bouncy like teenagers they're hard for people to sleep with because they're very alive um, and so the, it's the elder Andaras that will actually bring you in that grounding and that wisdom. And um, they're, they're excellent space holders and they, they train the colored pieces. Now I, I have lots of these on my website and they're all marked down 15% if anybody's interested. Um, um, and somebody's asking, uh, so where do they come from again? Is it, do they only come from the Sierra Nevadas? There, there are a couple other mines open besides here in Nevada or available, but they're not open. Like there, I, I have heard that there's one in Africa that has diamonds in it too. And so there's no access. Nobody can get there. Right. I believe that they are in more, more locations in the earth. We just have to find them. Yeah. And they are Lemurian and ours are Lemurian and they were a gift to the Atlanteans. So they are so, Lemurian. They are, I believe they are Lemurian in origin and the Lemurians gifted them to the Atlanteans to help them retain their fifth dimensional consciousness. I remember the Andaras um, through past life regressions, lighting up the temple caves, like the healing caves underneath the, the temples. You know, they were dark spaces with waterways and different inlets where, where the, the healers would go and work on the community. And I would go into regressions and I would see these brightly colored stones or crystals i didn't i didn't know what they were but i would see them lighting up these dark you know lighting and holding space and healing people and it wasn't until years later when i found the andaras they went oh that's what i was looking at wow 
So, uh, yeah. yeah, this is cool. So now you want to take us through this Metatron activation? I do, yes. And anybody who um, is willing to participate um, would, would be great. What I'm actually going to do is, is Archangel Metatron will energetically come forward and I will ask him to uh, place his geometry. And I'll show you again what it looks like. This configuration down into your aura, down through the crown of your head and your higher chakras and all the way down through your auric field. And this middle sphere right there, mm -hmm. the 13th is going to connect right to your sacred soul chakra. So just to kind of give you a visual what's gonna happen, it'll be completely through your energy field above and below. Um, all the way down to your earth star, all the way up to the infinite gateway, which is 12. Okay, you will be holding Metatron's cube in your energy field, which is gonna raise your vibration. Mm -hmm. It's gonna directly connect you to Archangel Metatron. Okay, it's con gonna connect into your sacred soul chakra. Metatron's cube will also protect you from negativity, even negativity from yourself. Mm. <laughs> That's um, and so as we start the meditation, I'm going to uh, ask if it, I will just kind of ask out loud if you are willing to receive Metatron's cube. And um, if you are, then I would like you just to kind of in your mind or out loud, everybody give your verbal. Yes. Like give your verbal agreement um, for him to bring that forward. If it's not something you agree to, that's cool too. Just to say no, thank you or sit this piece out. Um, but this will allow you to access Metatron directly if you would like to, or access him at a more profound level if, if you're already doing so. Um, he is available to all of us, not just the special people. He's available to everybody. Everybody plays. Everybody wins. You just offer your, your sacred yes, okay? All right. Okay, yeah. so I'll just... Ask everybody close their eyes. And we'll start this meditation as, as most meditations are, are started, just with focusing on your breath and becoming really present in your body. And just bringing some nice deep breaths deep into your body and call back your energy wherever it's been today. Just use your breath to call back your energy from everything, from everyone, even from this conversation that's been going on, you know, if your mind's going a little bit, if your energy's going, just ask that all your energy be returned to you in this present moment through your breath. And as you breathe in and out, all, all the way down to the bottom of your feet, to your earth star chakra, Nice, deep, beautiful breaths, just becoming fully present and very aware um, of your skin, the sensations of your skin, of your feet on the floor, and of just being just fully present and grounded now. And Metatron is already present with us, of course and ready to bring down his geometry into your energy field. And so at the start of this activation, you might already start to feel some kind of tingling in the crown of your head. Um, you might feel a little bit of activity in your higher chakras as he's preparing us to receive. And so I will ask you all for your verbal agreement. Do you accept Metatron's cube. And with that, you will gently begin to feel the integration or the insertion of Metatron's cube down into the top of your aura and your higher chakras, just touching into the crown of your head as Metatron's cube slides 360 degrees down inside your aura, just moving gently through your third eye and your throat and down around your shoulders. And you may start to see colors in your third eye. 
Um, I always see Metatron's cube as gold and rainbows. However, that's showing up for you is fine. And just gently, gently sliding his geometry down through your entire auric field, above your head, below your feet, front to back, side to side, and allowing Metatron's cube, the center sphere, to connect and kind of click right in place in that sacred soul chakra, number 13, lining up with number 13. And filling now the bottom of Metatron's cube below your feet, filling it above your head, 360 degrees around you. And just with a couple of more deep breaths, I'm actually gonna give you about, just take about 20 seconds just to connect in and to feel this and even connect into Archangel Metatron um, ask him a question or, or get a message if, if you like. And now you have fully received and are integrating the sacred geometry of Metatron's cube, which holds every configuration of sacred geometry within it. Merkaba, all five protonic solids, the seed of life, the fruit of life, the fire of life, the vesic of Pisces in your energy field. Hmm. Aloha keha kuha. Thank you, Todd. Mahalo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wisdom How word. Was that, uh, that was good. I was uh, going into theta. Yeah. I almost dropped the mic. Uh, Wisdomware.org. We put it up. Somebody put it up a while ago. There is a uh, I am soul. Thank you for that. I am soul 15. Yeah, that'll soul be good 15. through uh, the new moon on the fourth. That discount okay. code. All right. Very May cool. 4th. All right. So and a couple of people mentioned they, they, they want they're interested. So somebody did. Uh, I saw somebody here that put up Maureen McDonough. Yeah, McDonough. yes. She put up the uh, link. It's wisdomware.com. I'm going to I'm going to pin it. To Thank the top. you, Maureen. Thank okay. you. I'm going to pin that to the top so people can find it. And uh, and then you're going to be on the streets of Kapa'a next Saturday. Not this Saturday, but yeah, next Saturday. Yeah, for any, any Islanders, I'll be at first Saturdays all day long, slinging the wisdom wear love. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. We'll get down there probably in the evening. Yeah, good. Come see me. I, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll message you and let you know where I'm going to be. That sounds good. I haven't been down there for that. So it, it's a fun event. Yeah, I'm up for it. I'm up for it. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing all that with us. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next weekend, maybe. And uh, you guys get out to wisdomware.org. Uh, this is a year of co-creation, collaboration and supporting each other. So uh, it's all an equal energy exchange. And, and uh, we just have to be that to keep this thing moving and to expand it. So Thank you so much, Mira. Thank you for allowing me to express myself. Absolutely. That's what this platform's for. I'm sure we'll be doing it again. No problem. Excellent. So uh, I'll see you guys in a couple of days. I think we're going to take tomorrow off. <laughs> Yay! So I think we're going to try to have like romantic uh, day and night. Nice. Yeah. It's been cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. You take care. Aloha. Bye -bye. All right. See y'all later. Bye-bye.